then you are saying to them they have no right whatsoever to intrude on your land or to come and seek to seize you or to move against you. Now, the problem they have when you do this properly is this. Just as our oath, our word is our bond, underpins the law of the court in being able to monetize our word, the concept of possession, of lawful possession and vacant possession, underpins their existing land system. So if they break the concept of possession, if they break that, then their land title system means nothing. It means that they can, and anyone could arbitrarily seize any land they wanted and claim it as their own. Because if that's what they're doing, then that's what they're saying. Now, they may do occasionally tricky things, and they do, in writing property over and claiming that it's lawful. But always claiming that it's lawful and always claiming, albeit perversely, that a property uh, is conveyed by lawful uh, vacant possession. So because their system depends on this principle, they cannot breach it, otherwise their entire system is worthless. If they want to push you and they want to push enough people, then the quickest way to expose their land title system as a fraud is to prove that the laws of possession, lawful possession, no longer apply. And that may ultimately be what needs to happen. So there is certainly hope of some remedy, definitely. But just as we challenge them in claiming us as their slaves, we must challenge them lawfully on their claim of the land title. So I look forward to showing those notes to you in the uh, coming uh, week as it comes up. (laughs) Now I want to talk about great risks before we get into questions. And I want to cover a couple of things that we've been discussing on Great Writs, in particular the document of the deed of facts and interrogatories. Now, for those that are new to the call or those that have listened but have forgotten where you can go and see, if you go onto the home page and click on the, the box of Great Writs, uh, you'll get to the page on um, Article 112 of the Covenant, and on that page, if you go down to 112.12, 12, you'll see a list there with links. And if you click on any of those links, it'll take you directly to a, a generic version of the writ that goes on the back of one of their documents. Now, the writ is only one part of sending a great writ. The other part, and the most important part, is the deed of facts and interrogatories, which we've been working on. Now, one of the delays in the Great Writs is that everything we're doing, as I started out at the beginning of the call tonight, everything we're doing is for history. It's for reconveying rights. It's for honouring the law. It's for representing the divine. And it is exposing and ending any claim they could possibly have that they represent believe, honour the law, any law whatsoever. Now, when we're talking about anyone who claims to be Christian or Jewish or Muslim, there is one text that stands uh, as high as any in terms of outlining ancient law, and that is Leviticus. Leviticus is, while it is full of uh, horrendous hacking and chopping and burning of flesh, animal flesh, it does contain some of the most ancient principles of uh, purification and of sealing. And in particular, it gives us one of the oldest examples of the use of the blood seal as a form of purification, as a form of uh, anointment and ordination of male priests worthy of representing the divine. Now, one heaven and moving forward is not a chauvinistic or a sexist organisation at all. 
One of the things, though, in representing the sealing of great writs is to make clear the absolute significance and historical nature of these documents so that there can be no doubt. When a great writ is dishonoured, there is no daisy chain of further dishonour notices and you've been terrible and you shouldn't have done this. When a great writ is dishonoured, it has a viscerial, it has a earthquake shattering effect on the spiritual standing of those who dishonoured it. And that's the purpose. It's why it's called a great writ. When it's dishonoured, the dishonour itself is enough as a penalty. Now, what I'm referring to is the symbolism and the ritual involved in sealing a great writ. And I know that we've gone through blood seals and I know even now that people are concerned about this and I'm sorry that we have had to consider and, and resort to blood seals when quite frankly the general sealing of documents thereafter should simply be a red ink uh, seal or a signature is perfectly fine. For, for day-to-day documents within uh, the societies, a red ink thumbprint seal is perfectly fine. It's only for these ancient significant documents where we are representing the divine must we evoke these significant historical procedures. That's the only reason because when we do that and they dishonour these documents, which they are, then they are stripping themselves of their authority every moment of every day as we speak. And those that run the world know that and the bar so far has not woken up to it and they are destroying themselves every single day, their authority. Weaker and weaker, stupider and stupider to the point that soon it'll be over. So the great writ in terms of the deed of facts and interrogatories it is proposed will emulate the most ancient and the most sacred rituals of cleansing and atonement of those that seal it. So there can be no mistake that they are worthy of sealing a document for and on behalf of the divine and all men and women with them being purified in that process. And I'm referring to the symbolism of the blood imprint from the left, sorry, from the right earlobe and the right thumbprint in blood and the right great toe in blood. And if you want to know what I'm referring to, go and have a look at Leviticus. I'm not discussing any of the other rituals in terms of sacrificing animals or any of that because the symbolism of this is the following. Three men, and that's why I preface and apologise to all women, because this is merely reflecting a history and a closure of history, not a continuation of sexism, but if we are to honour an ancient ritual, we must respect that the ritual was male orientated. But three men willingly and openly choose to represent themselves as the lambs, the rams, in spilling some of their blood for the seal, but through that process purify themselves in the same manner as the most ancient priest class thousands of years ago, so that when the great writ is sealed and issued, there can be no question that the divine has approved that you have the right to issue it and when it is dishonoured, it totally and utterly destroys any pretension that they represent the law because it destroys them from the root totally and utterly. What this means is when you issue a great writ of habeas corpus, it must be clear, unequivocally clear, that the man or woman you seek to free from
from prison is without question unlawfully, has been unlawfully imprisoned. When you seek to right a wrong through mandamus, it must be absolutely clear that there is overwhelming evidence of malfeasance. The great writs are not to be sneezed at because as these are issued and as the bar stupidly and arrogantly and willfully ignores the laws they pretend to honour, it will utterly destroy them at the root. And that is the history. And that is what is coming at the end of the year when we talk about the day of divine judgment and the final conveyance. So sorry to be dwelling on such serious matters, but these are serious matters. When men and women, when our families and our partners have been hurt and tortured and imprisoned, these are serious matters. When our homes have been taken from us, these are serious matters. And you are not abandoned. But I cannot stand for you. You must stand for yourself. I, I cannot spoon feed you on every question. You, you have to make that judgment. I cannot in the future answer every email that you send. You're going to have to read and discuss amongst yourselves. But you are not alone. You are not abandoned. The divine has not abandoned you. And if you stand then you stand with all of heaven with you. If you stand, and enough people see you stand as a man and a woman, and not a slave, then your acts alone will help your community. So thank you tonight. I'm going to finish a bit early because I'm a bit tired, but thank you for, uh, for listening to the updates, and I'll switch over to questions. So thank you. All right, thank you, Frank. Um, just as a reminder for callers, if you press star eight, get yourself in the question queue, we can go to the phone line. Um, let's see, I don't have any questions on the chat. Frank, you were going to cover a little bit about the uh, um, what else are you going to cover tonight? Um, a little bit more on the mortgage process, maybe. Yeah, the, the the key to the key to the mortgage process is two. There's two remedies there. Um, there's a remedy in terms of getting yourself out of the position of being a delinqu delinquent tenant, and the other is to actually surrender their token and perfect your claim of right. Now, I offer both because. In some instances, uh, well, if it's not your primary domicile, then obviously you don't have that remedy available to you. But if you are uh, in the system, it may well be better for some people to pursue the um, I'm a tenant and the landlord has um, not provided any help and I, I want to renegotiate the rental agreement and go down that route. But for others... Um, there is no option down that road and they need to look at their claim of right if they're facing eviction uh, or if they have been evicted to reclaim their property that has been stolen from them. So tonight was really introducing uh, the cornerstone of the second, the cornerstone of, of reclaiming your right uh, in your promised land record, which by the way, on the system this week, will be automatically produced the same as your live born record that when you actually go through the process and fill in your details the uh, promised land record will also be available online so that's a, another exciting thing that will be ready by before the end of the week all right Terry all right very good <laughs> now is there um, a way to recover injury if you have been evicted and gone through that foreclosure part. Can you, can you cover a little bit about, about that tonight? Absolutely. Um, what the promised land record does and what the perfection of that claim of right does is that it gives strength to all of us in knowing that if you have been evicted, you have